All right, so this is going to be a quick tutorial on how to stress test a rig. So uh, for those who are unfamiliar, stress testing is basically when you import a rig into your Miocene and you literally just try to break it. See what the limitations are, uh, see how well articulates. That way when you animate, you know where the rig has its faults and where it shines. So the animation rig that we're gonna be using for this stress test is going to be, let me see. Uh, so always remember you wanna create a reference. So let's create a reference. We're going to create a reference for the ultimate ball rig. Right now, uh, you probably see nothing, but I am going into my files to pick out my ultimate rig. I'm clicking on the ultimate bony rig and perfect. Okay. So uh, right now I got a window saying unsupported nodes uh, and it says errors have occurred while reading this scene that may result in data loss. Please check the script editor for details. So you can see uh, my nodes are a little off right here. So uh, so now that I've uploaded my first rig, I'm, I'm already running into some interesting challenges. What the heck's going on here? So um, luckily, uh, I was very grateful to have another student kind of look at this for me. And they found out that all you have to do to make a consistent mesh or color throughout the entire rig is go to lighting. Click on lighting on the top left, and you're gonna scroll down to two-sided lighting. Click on two-sided lighting, and boom. Your animation rig is now one consistent tone. So uh, now, many of you are probably going to run into this with this rig. It's a little bit older, but it's one of my favorites for learning. It's very simple. Um, again, if you want to, uh, if you want to make a consistent color throughout your animation rig, all you have to do is go to the top left corner, click on lighting, and in lighting, you're going to click two-sided lighting, and that's going to make a consistent color throughout your entire rig. So now that I have that fixed, the first thing I wanna do is, and the first thing I enjoy doing, is picking uh, the root control or the main controller. So, um, Right now, I am just looking at how this rig moves. And it looks like the rig has the feet attached to the bottom. That I prefer, actually. I enjoy that. So having it set to the bottom is really, really good. I notice here the legs are really poppy. So you'll see what I mean. They instantly pop when I place them down. So that's something that I wanna keep in mind. I don't want my legs to be too straight when I'm animating this rig. So this is too straight for me. Um, I would, if I'm having this character stand, having a little bit of bend will prevent that poppiness. So that's something I'm gonna keep in mind when I'm animating this character. So uh, now for this assignment upcoming, I'm not going to be animating the hands. So there's two options for um, covering your arms for your assignment, which I will cover later. But in the meantime, let's just articulate these arms. Let's see how well they move. So um, one thing that I really like is if I'm moving the shoulder, I want it to also carry the arm with it as well. And that's what we have here. So uh, one thing that I'm, I'm not a big fan of is it's not articulating the shoulder all the way up. It's more so just rotating the um, the hand upwards, which is cool, but I have to keep that in mind if I'm doing something where the character is lifting up their shoulders. So if, they're, if a character is lifting up their shoulders, it's gonna be harder to articulate um, or imply that their shoulders are moving up. So um, now I know that. Uh, let's see, let's articulate the spine. 
Okay, that's neat. That looks good too. Um, okay, so things look to be in order. Uh, I'm looking at what every control does. Uh, let's see um, how the fingers are working. Fingers look good. Let's see what happens when I select all of them and rotate them. Okay, that looks actually pretty good. I like that. That's one of the many reasons why I like this rig. So uh, now let's see this, this arrow. Like, what does this arrow do? Um, it looks like it doesn't do anything. I can't even control it. Um, you know what? Let's check the channel box on the side. Uh, oh, look, that's my IK and FK switch. So for those who are unaware, an FK means forward kinematics. And that means that I am articulating things um, joint by joint. So um, what does that mean? If I want to move this hand forward in front of this character, I'm going to have to rotate the shoulder. I'm going to have to rotate the elbow. And then I'm going to rotate the wrist a little bit. And now it is articulated right in front of the character. That's forward kinematics. Now, IK, on the other hand, is inverse kinematics. What that means is, um, if I show you here in the channel box, let me click on that arrow again so you can see what it does. Again, I can't articulate the arrow, so that means it probably has something in the channel box, just as a heads up. If you can't articulate something and it's grayed out, it's probably a controller that you have to manipulate in the channel box. So if you see the switch to IK to FK, if I switch it to zero, did you see that? I have lost um, my three um, joint articulators, but I now have this little hand control. And let's just see what happens when I play with the hand control. So now you see that just by moving the hand, it automatically articulates the joints for me. So if I were to um, put this hand right in front, I'm just gonna rotate it exactly where I want. And then boom, um, it's right in front of the chest. Uh, one thing to also keep in mind is, uh, do you see how the elbow can kind of give you some weird stuff like that? So let's say I want my hand like that, but oh my gosh, what happened? It's going through the, it's broken. Actually, it kind of looks like aliens. <laughs> okay, so uh, what do you do if that happens? Well, generally speaking, you have an elbow controller. And this will allow you to articulate the elbow uh, in different ways as well. So if I'm moving this, I can move it down, I can move it up. But I fixed it now, where the elbow is no longer going inside the mesh. So again... This is something that you want to do when you're doing a stress test. You want to see what the animation rig will do if you put it into IKFK and if there's anything you can do to change how it articulates. Uh, we'll cover the benefits of FK and IK in not this assignment, but the next. So let's go ahead and put that back. Uh, now that I have that, um, just like we were talking about in our last assignment, you have the root control right here. Sometimes the names are going to be switched. In this case, it's called the main control because um, I guess it's the main. But I I'll have to work on a, <laughs> a better word for, for root and main. But by and large, all you need to know is this. Generally speaking, The controller at the very bottom is going to control the entire rig. You don't want to touch this by and large, and you don't want to key or animate this. The main thing that you want to animate is the hip control or the main controller, I like to call it. Um, this is exactly what you want to articulate as far as moving the character. Um, and we'll cover that more in the jump exercise. So uh, now that I've kind of played around with what everything does, I'm deliberately going to try to break this rig. I want to see how far I can push it. So if I'm going to squat this character, how low do they go? So look, I did not know that this rig uh, does this. When I squat the character all the way down, 
the knees lean to one side over another. So that's something that I'm going to have to keep in mind if the character is ever going to be lowered. Now, uh, let's see what happens when I lift this character up. Um, if I lift this character up, see how the feet are left in IK, inverse kinematics? Um, because of that, the controllers are still left there and they influence the feet. So if I were to make the character jump and fly, I would also have to move the foot controls as well and see how they automatically follow. Now, look what happens um, uh, with IK. Because I left the knee controllers back there, it's now some sort of evil, weird looking creature. So again, uh, because of that, I know now that these knee controls are a huge part of this rig. So I'm gonna move those forward and look, it's automatically fixed. So this can only be done by stress testing. And I highly recommend all of you do this starting um, anytime you introduce a new rig to your scene. So now I'm gonna reset that. Um, generally speaking, I would test this a little bit more, but I think you all have the idea. You just wanna play around with your controllers. Um, let's just uh, hit some of these other controllers, see what they do. Um, now, let's say for instance, you want to switch your feet to FK. So uh, I have a similar arrow here that I do down here. Look, it has the FK IK switch. And now you can see the difference side by side, what they look like. FK, again, forward kinematics. If I want to rotate this leg forward, I gotta start with the hip down to the knee and then I can go down to the ankle. Uh, for the inverse, I can literally just rotate this and put it in the same position. Boom. So there's plus, pluses and minuses to both FK and IK that we'll cover later. So let's go ahead and reset that. Um, but that's it, that's, that's how you do a stress test. And this is the easiest way to see the limitations and the highlights of a rig. So let me go ahead and stop this video.